Hello, my name is Anne Marie Kapinski, and I'm going to take you through doing a lower extremity arterial duplex ultrasound exam. Um, as you can see from the patient, this is how we would like to have folks position, having their hip slightly externally rotated and their knee slightly flexed. From this orientation, we can pretty much see from the common femoral artery up here down through most of the superficial femoral. Then we'll come behind, more posterior approach here to look at the popliteal and then continue on down the calf. And we can pretty much see everything from this view. We'll just have to turn the leg when we go and evaluate the anterior tib. But we'll start up here at the groin and orient. Uh, I usually just start with a transverse view, um, right pretty much as high up as I can and try to find the saphenofemoral junction, which, uh, let's see, let me just bring up a trackball, or the arrow, the cursor, I mean, right, yeah. Up here on the screen, you can see we have this oriented, obviously, so the patient's right is on your left, and, and the patient's left is on our right. We can see the common femoral vein in the center, the common femoral artery right here, and the great saphenous vein coming up here. And if I press down, I know I've got the veins where they uh, are, as I just described. And that's really our starting point for most uh, lower extremity evaluations. I'm just going to go into a, a sagittal or longitudinal view of the artery. And I'm adjusting the DGCs a little bit because most of the time when we do vascular, we kind of like to see the lumen nice and dark and we can throw in our color, okay? And we wanna make sure we're not in the vein. I'm just slid over a little more medially to show you the vein and the appearance of the vein. Obviously the, the color flow is more continuous, obviously phasic with the respiration. The artery here is a lot more pulsatile I haven't adjusted the presets for color, uh, and it's totally showing us the multiphasic pattern we'd expect to see in the common femoral artery. I take color off just for a second, and we take a look at the grayscale image and what we're seeing here. And obviously this is a very nice, normal uh, subject. We have no plaque, nice thin walls. If I put the color back in again, we see good color filling. You would adjust your color PRF and your gain because we, uh, we don't want the gain up too high. And I'm going to just increase the gain for a second to show you what we don't want. We don't want this. We don't want it spilling out into the grayscale. You want to drop it right back until it's pretty much filling to the edge of the wall but not spilling out. If I put in the pulse Doppler, we want to be able to sample fairly um, close to the center of the blood vessel because that's going to have the highest velocities. And we can see again, a nice multiphasic pattern. We're pretty well aligned here to 60 degrees. I'm gonna freeze it for a second. And th this system is set up, it automatically seeks a peak and end diastolic velocities. And in this case, our peak velocity is 73 and diastolic velocity is just under nine, and that is, again, the common femoral artery. Now, if we saw anything other than this and did not see a multiphasic waveform, we would extend further north up into the iliac vessels and make sure that there was no disease up in the iliac vessels. But we can see here clearly on the screen, this is a nice sharp upstroke, a narrow peak, a rapid deceleration, so this is a very good upstroke here in systole, and it's telling us that that blood flow has not passed through any kind of a stenosis in any way. We see the reflected wave here, telling us we're dealing with a high resistance bed, again, textbook normal. And this third component in end diastole, this anagrade flow at the end of diastole is basically due to um, healthy, compliant elasticity of the vessels uh, further central to where we're imaging. So I'm going to go back just to grayscale here and I'm going to come down just a little bit and I hardly move my hand at all. I basically just angled it. 
And now we see we're coming to a bifurcation, and that bifurcation is uh, the bifurcation into the superficial femoral artery and the profundifemoral artery, or as that sometimes is called the deep femoral artery. Now, because they're kind of angling a little bit in, in different orientations, I'm going to capture the profundifemoral artery first, and we'll want to get a Doppler signal from there as well. So we're going to look right at the origin here. And again, a multiphasic pattern, nice sharp upstroke. All right, and we see here our peak velocities are around 63. Again, usually in the peripheral artery, we want the velocities less than 150, although in most folks, it's probably even less than 100. Um, that's a ballpark criteria that we can use. But again, we're really looking at the, the shape of this waveform, and that's very characteristic of, of a nice, normal, high-resistance arterial bed. Um, this is probably the only area that we really need to look at for the profund ephemeral or deep femoral. Um, basically just the origin, just to look at plaque. Um, if there was disease, perhaps in the SFA, um, the profund ephemeral artery might be a choice for a bypass inflow site. Now we're going to come back again, and we're in the SFA now here up at the top of the screen. This is the SFA. All right, we're seeing a little bit of the vein underneath. The profunda is down here, and it angles away uh, in a manner that we really don't see much of it. So I'm just going to look at the SFA here just for a little bit, just to point out a couple of things. And I've, I'm trying to make it really flat because obviously when we're at 90 degrees to the ultrasound beam, we're going to get the best image. And here again, the, the things we want to look for is this nice thin wall, this very smooth wall. There's no bumps, crevices, no sign of any plaque, no sign of any calcification. Um, we can even right here um, kind of appreciate the intimal medial complex, which is not something we really look at in the the lower extremity arteries, but it is there and we can see it. So we know we're dealing with a very healthy blood vessel. And what we want to do is really Doppler through the entire length of the vessel. So whether that's in color first to give sort of an overall scan, or if we do it in triplex with Doppler, but I'm going to look first in color because color certainly is a good tool. And you can see I'm just sort of uh, rocking my hand just a little bit back and forth to keep that lined up. I want to see the vessel all the way from one edge of the screen to the other. I know I'm, I'm completely dead center over that nice and lined up with that vessel. I'm not oblique. If I kind of see this and see this sort of like kind of oval shape, I'm oblique to that vessel and, and that's not really how I want to follow it down. I want to follow it um, like this where I can line it right up and obviously as you move you're going to have to adjust yourself adjust the position but this is the technique that you would use to follow all the vessels whether upper extremity lower extremity um, and let me just move that uh, oh, that's not what I wanted to do there we go I'm just going to move the color box a little bit deeper I don't like to make it too large because then it'll uh, decrease the frame rate a little bit in some systems anyways, not in, you know, as we get deeper, it certainly, uh, it, it, can, it has to travel further and listen longer and so forth, so it may drop the frame rates. So now we're getting a little bit deep here, okay, um, not very far down his leg, so I'm just going to stop for a second and get a little more gel. I don't like to put a an absolute ton of gel on patients just because um, just because that as that gel uh, starts to dry up and the water evaporates from it it cools them off the patients get cold they vasoconstrict and then you're kind of particularly if you're doing a venous exam uh, you're gonna create more trouble for yourself now you'll probably see, let me just change the orientation of that color box for a second. You'll see various branches off of the SFA that are normally there. Now I know I'm not getting good color filling here in the SFA, but 
I just wanted to show you that you can see small tributaries, small branches coming in and out of the SFA. Um, they're not important for the routine scan. However, when you have a vessel that's diseased or occluded, these can get very large and you can see them uh, become pretty pronounced. So we're going to continue scanning down as far as we can. We're going to change the steering back. Sometimes there's enough of an angle on the vessel itself that we don't really need to angle the color box, but just sort of keep it kind of straight. And now I'm getting a little bit further, a little bit deeper, and the color is totally being my guide here because I'm uh, getting now deep. If you look at where my hand is in relation to the knee joint, I'm really just about at the adductor canal at about this point that artery and vein are going to pass through the muscle and come up behind the knee. So we've really scanned the superficial femoral artery for the extent that we'd want to and you'd want to come back and record some velocities. And we would come up and I'll just show you again either with the color on and we'll now we'll need to just uh, see steer this a little and then we'll put our Doppler again we want to keep 60 degrees or less and it's very easy in the leg to just toe heel a little bit and, and create a good um, good angle and here we are again uh, velocity of about 109 108 textbook normal we would repeat this getting a signal, say, mid-SFA. And then one further down. And if you had any issues, you could just take the color off, have the machine work a little less hard, and concentrate mostly on gaining that Doppler signal. And you can see it cleared up just a little bit because we're asking it to do less. So if you come in and out of modes, um, Remember, you know, the machine has only so much uh, capability, so as you add it more and more in and make it do more and more, it will sacrifice somewhere. But that's an excellent waveform, again, high resistance, triphasic waveform, and that's exactly what we would expect to see the whole way down the leg. So we start at the common femoral up here. We scan through the superficial femoral to the point where we really started to lose it and it started to go through and come up behind the leg. So now, without having to make the patient change their leg, we're gonna come back here and find the popliteal vessels. I'm just adjusting the focus a little bit because the vessels are a little bit more superficial here. Once we're behind the knee, now what we see is the popliteal vein on top of the popliteal artery. And again, if I hold still, obviously you can see that the artery is beating. And if I compress, the vein compresses away. Uh, again, depending upon uh, your individual lab protocols, you can follow the uh, popliteal artery up as much as you want. Um, I'm really now on the lower part of his thigh, probably right about here. So I'm really picking it up just about where I left off. And again, it's nice and smooth walled. And I believe this guy coming off right here, which is the first big branch, um, is the anterior tib. And I followed it a little bit before we started the uh, demonstration. So I'm pretty sure that's the anterior tib. But let's look at some color. And again, because there's a nice angle to the vessels here, I don't really have to work at adjusting the color box too much. And we see another branch down here. Who knows, one of the genicular branches, not too important to us again, but this is the area we'd want to scan. And now here for our Doppler, we'll want to give us a little more angle. 60 degrees is perfect. 
but less than 60 is okay in here without having to fuss too much. I've adjusted it, now I'm at 56 degrees. And again, multiphasic, high, sharp upstroke, narrow peak and so forth, that's a normal uh, Doppler signal and we're down to about 68 centimeters per second for velocity. As we go out the arterial tree, we expect the blood to slow down. We want it to slow down so by the time you get to the capillaries, you have good exchange. So most folks record, oh, most folks record just um, a representative signal from the popliteal. Coming down, um, we'll come back to the anterior tib in a little while. Once you see the anterior tib branch off, now where we're at is really the tibial perineal trunk. Um, and that's a varying length. And as we come down, and I'm just going to adjust my focus a little bit in depth because we're getting just a little bit d deeper, that vessel splits. And it's splitting right here. Let me put the color on. Maybe that'll help show a little bit better. I'm just going to move the machine a little closer to me here. <laughs> Okay, so we're up here in uh, got the tibial perineal trunk, and if I come down real slow, now we have two vessels here, just coming and branching off, two groups of vessels. It's a little hard to appreciate. There you go, a little bit better. Now you can see the two separate arteries here. One is going to be the posterior tib, and one is going to be the perineal. And the perineal artery is going to stay deep right on top of the fibula. This is the edge of his fibula right here. The perineal vessels used to be called the fibular vessels, fibular artery, fibular vein, because of their orientation. This guy up here that's going to sit up a little higher and a little close to the edge of the tibia is going to be the posterior tibial. So you can see we follow these right on down and you can see if I move, you know, we get some venous flow in there as well. I'm just upping the gain just a little bit because I'm actually running low of gel, but we can really appreciate here where we're at and what we see. And we can see these two vessels. So same thing, you know, down here, they're getting a little smaller. I'm gonna take color flow off for just a second and show you the grayscale. Now, again, the, these guys are small and they change their orientation a little bit, do a little bit of twisting and turning. So we wanna make sure we stay on the artery and don't get fooled that we're slipping off into a vein. But there's the artery, that's the posterior tip. We'll put the color back on. And again, I'm looking up here at the top vessel. And what we want to do is probably record. And this is, again, going to depend on your individual protocols, but a representative signal in terms of the uh, peak systolic velocities. And we see, again, this triphasic flow pattern peaking out at around 58, 57, so that's perfectly fine. Now you can follow it in grayscale, but uh, which is fine. You do want to assess it and make sure there's no plaque or no calcification, but you can see beautiful color filling and, and our subject today has wonderful anatomy. We're getting both the posterior tibial and the perineal in the same view. This may not be possible in most patients and an alternate way would be to come, and I'm just gonna show you for a second with the transducers to basically come and really come around more posterior to kind of catch the perineal in a heavier, deeper leg. So you'll follow these vessels down. Again, recording um, velocity, recording color, looking along, eventually, the, post, the perineal vessel, the deeper one here, will start to branch into a couple little branches and you won't see it anymore. Um, basically, it has some communicating branches that will connect into portions of the distal anterior tib and posterior tib. So now I'm just gonna focus a little bit 
on the posterior tip. Now, as I started earlier, I said, you know, we don't want our color to look like this, so I'm gonna drop my color gain back a whole bunch, okay? So we can get it out of the tissue because we don't want it in the tissue. We want it in the blood vessel. So again, it's nice laminar flow, filling the vessel completely. We're coming down, and as you can see, I'm just about down to our subject's uh, sock here. <laughs> and if we were doing this, depending on the, um, I'm just gonna take this down just a little bit. Depending on the reason why we were scanning a patient, we would include really following the vessel all the way down here to behind the ankle, as well as when we come around, we'll follow the dorsalis pedis on top. So we wanna get all the way down to these pedal vessels because it's those pedals, pedal vessels that may be an outflow source for some patients. So I'll just show you down here, you know, when you Doppler, do a regular Doppler, you know where you're putting uh, your transducer to listen for an ankle pressure. It's the same kind of thing that we're gonna do here. Now I didn't change the frequency of this transducer or, or anything. If it's a very skinny patient, these are very superficial vessels and you might wanna change the frequency. But we can see here on the ultrasound image, a very nice, healthy posterior tibial artery. We're way distal. In a little bit further, we won't be calling this the posterior tib anymore. Um, it'll become part of one of the plantar uh, arches and we'll take another Doppler way down here just, just to be complete. I'm just adjusting my scale a little bit so we can fit everything on the screen. I'm going to take the color off just for a second and just clean up that signal so I don't have any noise. And again, we still see a multiphasic pattern here. Our peak velocity of 73 and diastolic velocity is zero, and that's a normal pattern. So we've shown how to follow all the way down. The only other vessel we haven't evaluated is the anterior tibial artery. So I'm going to have you straighten your knee for me. And the anterior tib, I'm going to have you just roll it a little bit to the inside. That's fine. Is over here, OK? It's on the outside lateral compartment. Now, sometimes they're easy to find, and sometimes they're not as easy to find. So let's just take a gander here. I'm going to increase my depth again a little bit. And sometimes it's a little bit challenging to see what's what. All right, so what I like to do, and it's a sort of cheating, but not really. You can follow these vessels any way you want. I'm going to come down to the foot, because right across the top of the ankle here, there's only one thing going on, and that one thing is the dorsalis pedis artery. The dorsalis pedis artery is the distal extension onto the foot of the anterior tibial artery. So here we have the dorsalis pedis, and we can see color. We can see it filling. It's a little vessel, two or three millimeters. You know, depends on the, on the subject, obviously, but we should still see this kind of high resistance pattern. And we see that multiphasic pattern. So what we want to do here, you can do a couple things. You can follow it in grayscale. You can follow it in color. It's curving up around some of the ankle bones. And here we see coming back up. And we can see, even on color, I think you can appreciate this vessel is a little bit smaller than the posterior tib. But we're going to follow it back up. Here we are coming along. And we saw it where it took off up off the popliteal, and now we're gonna follow it right along the anterior compartment. And it, if you can appreciate, his tibia is about here, right, the, the top edge of it. So we're just a couple of centimeters over. And if I take color off for a second and show you transverse where I am, okay, I'm just a little bit off of the side of the edge of the tibia here, and we're kind of deep, sort of sitting you know, in between the two bones, but it's pretty easy. If you can't see it in the mid-calf region, 
follow it and evaluate it by finding the dorsalis pedis and coming backwards. And again, here's the color, nice and normal and filling all the way up. There's that Doppler. If we don't see that multiphasic uh, multi Doppler, then we have to think either we're dealing with somebody who is in a hyperemic state, or perhaps they have an occlusion. It all depends on what's going on in this portion of the waveform. If we basically only see one systolic component, just this bit right here, and no reflected wave, and no anagrade component at the end, we're probably dealing with a patient who we're upstream from an occlusion. It's, it's uh, experiencing pretty significant resistance. If we see this, but then we see a lot of diastolic flow, then now we know we're in a low resistance bed, and that could be the result of disease or it could be a hyperemic state. But this is what we want to see pretty much in any artery outside uh, arms, legs, so forth in, the, in a normal individual. So from here, we would follow and continue to follow on up how whatever mechanism is easiest for you. If you want to do color, because color certainly is kind of quick and not too difficult, we can follow it all the way back up in color. And again, you know, it's going to take a little tweaking here and there as the vessel changes shape. We might need to change, you know, our scale or color gain to keep it filling. And we might need to change our approach a little bit from a more uh, lateral approach instead of a more anterior approach. And you'll see it's going to come up. What I'm going to have you do actually is just, can you roll just a little bit that way? Okay, I just want to be able to show you the very upper edge where the anterior tip dips away. And it's just a little easier here. So when we start over, we come back to where, our, where, where we were, where we knew uh, we had the vessel and come back on it. Of course, we gotta get back on it. trying to figure out the best way to kind of approach it coming back up. We're getting a little artifact here. And it goes following it better in the other orientation, but Here we see it. And again, we want to make it line right up so we know we're following the vessel. And we're kind of losing it a little bit up here. I'm just going to have you just relax your leg a little bit. Just relax like that. Okay. Because this really usually can follow this pretty easily up. So I'm not sure if it's uh, just a little bit. Actually, we'll have you roll back over on your back. It was actually a little bit better to follow that from that approach. And I'm just going to hold on here a little bit different. Okay. So again, we started down here because we can clearly see it on the ultrasound image as it crosses the ankle. All right. So we're going to come up where we found it last. All right. And this is just like real, real world. When you get lost, you come back to where you were and then continue to follow it. And again, I'm kind of over off to the, the side of the tibia 
And here it's just a little bit easier view. I think as I turned him, uh, some of the muscles got extended, some of the tendons a little bit, and it just sort of pushed things a little bit more out of view. Now we should be able to come up and follow it. We're still losing it a little bit here, so I'm going to see what I can follow it more in transverse. Now he might have a little bit, um, his anatomy might be such, we're getting a little bit of artifact right here, okay? Um, and we're losing it a little bit here. But some folks, you know, uh, you can follow it up pretty far and others, you don't get to follow it quite so far. The important part though, we saw the takeoff of the anterior tib. I'm just following it here transversely. And we're coming up, it's getting a little deeper. But again, we had a nice normal waveform. We're getting a little bit, a little bit up here now. Okay, and in a minute, not much further, it's going to take a, a nosedive and go away from us. Let's put our color on here for a sec. And I'm coming up, I'm coming up, I'm still coming, still coming. And now we can see, where is it going? It's dipping away from us right here, okay? Um, as you can see where my hand is, it's coming up. It's going to go behind the tibia through an opening in the interosseous membrane and hook back up to the popliteal. So we've got a nice, and there's the companion veins alongside as I move here and there, but we should still see that nice multiphasic pattern. And that's exactly what we're getting. Okay, so basically we could follow it further than I thought, but again, about at this point, it's gonna dip down and go away from us. So, to recap, um, we've taken you through the lower extremity arterial duplex. We started up here at the common femoral artery. And as I said, if that's all nice and normal, we're good here. If it's not, then we'd wanna go further north and look at the iliacs and even the aorta. But that's not routinely done in some labs. Some labs do the whole thing. But that's a matter of your preference. Up at the top, we looked at the common fem and the, and the origin of the profunda femoral or deep femoral artery. We scanned through the whole length of the superficial femoral artery. Then we kind of came from behind the knee like this, and we evaluated the popliteal, the takeoff of the anterior tib, the tibial perineal trunk. And then from a more posterior medial approach in through here, we followed the posterior tibial and perineal arteries down, following the posterior tibial artery behind the ankle. And then just to wrap it up, we found the dorsalis pedis at the top of the foot and followed it back as it became the anterior tib and continued all the way up to about here where it dove down away from us to come back up into the popliteal. We looked at color, we looked at the grayscale, and we looked at Doppler and we recorded everything and that is the lower extremity arterial duplex scan.